In the 7.5 set, we're going to use the triangle congruence criteria to, class, um, to justify some conjectures or guesses. So what's going to happen here is that they're going to give us some congruence statements, and then they're going to ask us to prove is something else true. Now to do this, we're going to um, use one of the ways to prove triangles are congruent. Keeping in mind, most of you know four ways to prove congruence of triangles. Side, 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 angle, side, angle, side, angle, or angle, angle, side. Now there is a fifth way, which is HL, or hypotenuse leg, but not everybody's been introduced that one yet, and you won't actually use it on any of these. So the goal is, we're going to take what they give us, prove the triangles are congruent, and then use the idea that if the triangles are congruent, congruent triangles have congruent parts. That is, if the triangles are congruent, then the corresponding pieces, even if they weren't originally given to us, are also going to be congruent. And that's how I could do on number seven here, prove that angles A and C are going to be congruent. Those are corresponding parts, so if those triangles are congruent, those matched pieces are congruent. Now there's different ways to uh, lay out an argument. You may have seen a flow chart in your class or maybe even a two-column proof. I'm actually going to use the two-column proof here. Now to do this though, I want to start by marking what I have. I want to look at the picture, mark what they're telling me as my givens, and then kind of get that as a strategy to figure out how I'm going to prove this other thing where that angles A and C are also congruent. Now in this problem, I think that that first thing they give you is kind of a distractor. When it says point M is the midpoint of DB, that's not particularly useful here because DB, if we cut it in half, that little piece segment either DM or BM is not really a side of the triangle. The whole side DB is the side. So having the midpoint here really doesn't help. So I'm going to mark the other stuff. They're giving me that angle ABD is congruent to angle BDC. They're also telling me that segment AB up top is congruent to segment DC on the bottom. Now in our triangle congruence uh, methods, we need three pieces. This is only two. Two pieces isn't enough to prove congruence. But do you remember something else from class that may have been talked about that you can add to a picture? We get this segment in the center, DB. Which triangle is that part of? It's part of both. DB is the bottom of the top triangle, but it's also the top of the bottom triangle. That DB can be congruent to itself. It's a shared side, and that's called reflexive property. Anytime a pair of triangles share a side, or even share an angle, we can say that it's congruent to itself by reflexive property. It's one of the pieces we can add to a picture, sometimes, to get that third piece to prove congruence. Now looking what I have, I've got three pieces, and what I'm seeing is two sides with an angle in between. This is side angle side. So I can prove the triangles are congruent by SAS, and then, because angles A and C are corresponding parts of congruent triangles, then those also have to be congruent. So now I'm going to take what I just kind of laid out for you and we're going to put it on paper. We're going to organize it. I'm going to use a two-column proof. It's not the best way to do it, but it's, it's a very organized, convenient way to do it. So in a two-column proof, we use a T-chart. And up top are the statements on the left, reasons on the right. Every time I stay, say a reason or a statement, I'm going to give a reason on the right-hand side for why I know it's true. All right, so I'm going to start with my givens. Now, because I didn't use the midpoint when I did this, I'm not going to include that. Instead, I'm going to start with my angle. Angle ABD is congruent to angle BDC. And that was something that was given to me. Were there anything else given to us? Sure, they told us that AB is congruent to DC. That would also be a given. Were there any other givens? Well, not that we used. That DB and DB being congruent, that wasn't a given. So why would segment DB be congruent to DB? We added it. What was the reason I said? It was the reflexive property. Anytime you're sharing a side, it's congruent to itself. And the reason for that is the reflexive property. Now that I've got my three pieces, I've got to do a set of matched congruent triangles. And you gotta be careful about the order. So I'm looking at my picture, and you can start with either the triangle at the top, triangle at the bottom, doesn't matter. Just pick any order for the first triangle, and you just gotta match the order for the other one. Now I'm looking the way I did the tick marks. I think to me it makes kind of sense to go across the one tick mark to the tick two tick mark and just go maybe like, for instance, triangle A to B to D. If I follow the tick marks, I can match it on the other triangle by matching and following the tick marks. So if I say triangle A to B to D up top, one tick mark to two tick mark, what would that be on the bottom? What's the pathway on the bottom that goes through the one tick mark to the two tick mark? Ah, it'd be CDB. So triangle ABD is congruent to triangle CDB. What's the reason? Which one of those four things down below would be the reason why these triangles are congruent? 
well, two sides in the angle in between, is SAS. But this isn't what they wanted us to prove. This, it, nowhere does it say prove triangles are congruent. Instead, the conjecture, are angles A and C congruent? Well, now that I've got the triangles are congruent, how do I know that those other angles are also congruent? This is the idea that congruent triangles have congruent parts. If the triangles are congruent, the other matched pieces are still have to be congruent. Angles A and C are corresponding parts, they're matched pieces, which means because the triangles are congruent, they also have to be congruent. Now we're gonna do the same thing in the other problems. Um, with number eight, we can add the reflexive property on, in addition to the angle on the side they told me. The only thing on number eight that's a little different is gonna have one extra step. That we can go through, we can prove the triangles are congruent. And they want us to prove that JK bisects angle MKL. What does bisect mean? It means cut in half. They're gonna prove, we're gonna prove that JK, that middle piece, cuts angle MKL over on the right hand side in half. Which means that we'd want to prove that angle MKJ up top, that part of angle K, and LKJ, the other part of angle K, are equal. And we can do that because congruent triangles have congruent parts. If we prove the triangles are congruent, those two matched little halves of the angle over on the right-hand side are congruent, which means that yes, then the last step, JK did bisect angle MKL, definition of bisect. So that's how you kind of lay that one out. Number nine is a little tougher. On number nine, they're just saying that triangle ADM is a 180 degree rotation of triangle CMB. So we're basically told that the triangle on the right, triangle CMB, was rotated 180 degrees to form triangle ADM. But what they want us to prove, instead of the triangle on the left and right being congruent, they want to prove that the triangles up top and on the bottom are congruent. Is triangle ABM congruent to triangle CDM? Well, Here's how I would probably approach this. If we're doing a 180 degree rotation, the triangle on the right is gonna be a, um, a copy of the triangle on the left. If you do a rotation, the two triangles are still congruent because the size and the shape don't change. They're congruent. So if you did a 180 rotation, that side that was BM, when it rotates around is gonna come DM. So BM and DM would have to be congruent because a rotation preserves congruence. Similarly, side CM, and AM would be matched pieces on the rotation, so they're congruent, and BC and AD would be congruent. But only two of those are part of the top and bottom triangles. So I could prove that maybe like those triangles are congruent, left and right, and then maybe use two of those pieces, side AM and BM for the top triangle, would be congruent to its matched pieces on the bottom triangle, DM and CM, but I have to have a third piece to prove that uh, the top and bottom triangles are congruent. Now thinking about this, the easiest way I could come up with would be using vertical angles. Vertical angles are what happens when two lines cross or two segments cross. The angles that are opposite from each other are always congruent. So you could add a third piece to this one by saying angle AMB is congruent to CMD by vertical angle theorem. So that would be the third piece I would use and then prove the top triangle is congruent to the bottom triangle. All right, so I've kind of given you a verbal way to lay that one out. Good luck on setting it up.